But here's, here's what I say about anybody that wants to get into professional brewing. Professional brewing. I've got eight things written down a little bit. I've got like little bullet notes and then I can just go on rants and stuff like that. Number one, maybe, maybe the most important, maybe not in any particular order, but um, step one, how to get into the industry. Be an avid home brewer. Brew 25 batches of beer. And not only that, it rolls over to, I know people that started out with beer and then they ended up at local wineries or they started working at Henneberry, which is a, a local distillery. And it's like, once you know about equipment and temperatures and valves and how stuff works and why stuff goes bad, alcohol kind of rolls over. I mean, the, you know, it's a little bit different between obviously beer and distilling and stuff like that. But a lot of the equipment's the same and it's still the same blue collar job. You know, if you can do one, if you're great at one, you're probably going to be great at the other. So I think first and foremost, I would say brew beer on your own. And, you know, one of the cool things about buying homebrew stuff is you, you don't have to be 21. You know, like back in the day, we were all like, we tried so hard to get people to buy us beer. Older brothers get a fake ID. It's like, we should have just made our beer. Making alcohol is so easy. So yeah, I would say probably get 25 batches of beer under your belt. That's probably about a year of homebrewing. Maybe, maybe a year and a half, maybe two years, but maybe a year. That's a lot of brewing. That's brewing twice a month. So yeah, become an avid home brewer. Get to all grain fast. Understand just the general stuff, converting starches to sugars and why we need stuff and why we need it this to cool down and this hot for this to happen. And what is, you know, all this shit do and uh, air and control and the enemy and sunlight and figuring out all that stuff. Um, figure that out on your own because ultimately it's passion. Parents don't generally get their kids into brewing generally just stems from passion because brewing's fucking really cool second this is a big one it might not seem like a big one but don't be a bar fly i used to work at a brewery and i'd have guys come in all the time get drunk and they would just ask for jobs just be drunk every night like can i get a job can i get a job can i get a job it's like you're the last person we're gonna give a job to now you're the last person you're here every night drunk driving out of here for the most part and you're asking for a job no. no, 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 that's, that's, that's not how it works. That is especially not how it works. So don't be that guy. We all know that guy. We all have got that friend. That's that guy. I've probably been that guy, but don't be that guy. If you're trying to get into the beer industry, do not be a bar fly asking every employee that you see there for them to hire you. Do not do that. Step three, how to get into the beer industry education, but the pluses and minuses of it, the pluses and minuses of education. Uh, Mike's class, Mike, comes on from Culver Brewing. He owns Culver Bre Bruco Brewing, Culver Brewing. Tom's been there. Great place, total neighborhood bar, great beer, great vibe, great deli. And he also runs a class in Miracosta, which is a local junior college. It's a great school, it's a great junior college. And it's, I think it's a couple thousand dollars. Don't quote me on that. Education works, but treat it more of like a trade school. You don't need a four-year degree for brewing. You don't need a, a four-year degree on reading brew books and you know graduating at 22, 23 years old or whatever and get $50,000 in debt taking these classes. Absolutely not. I say as far as education goes, like a formal certificate, six months tops, six months you learn a lot about beer. And I know Mike's class, it's, it's got a lab, which means it's pretty much hands-on. It's pretty much how like classes used to be back in the day. Like high school had like wood shop, auto body, cooking, home ec, stuff like that. And they got rid of all those jobs, which is stupid because those, those jobs actually get you jobs. So Mike's class is like that. Um, I know that there's like UCSD and I think, um, what's the big one up in NorCal? They have like a actual, it's not Chico. What's the other one? Maybe UC Davis. They've got like a big brew program. You don't need a four year degree in beer. You want to get a lot more experience under your belt rather than just, you know, reading books and talking about trends. You can, you know, buy your own books and read your own magazines for that. So I think, yes, yes on education. I say six months tops and don't break the bank. Don't go to some CIA hosh posh cooking brew school where it's $80,000 and the dorms are as nice as, you know, the Hogwarts, Hogwarts dorms or whatever. And you're, costing your parents an arm or arm and a dick or you're taking out loans and by the time you graduate you're eighty thousand dollars in debt 
that's not worth it at all because brewers don't make that much money. It's like because it's like becoming a chef. It's pretty much like becoming a chef. Six month class, take Mike's class, try to find classes that are like trade schools. And mark my words, if you're passionate and you're trying to get good grades in the class, after six months, you'll be a fucking wizard at brewing. You'll know more than I will. You'll know, book stuff, book stuff. You'll know more than a lot of people will. You'll know why, what, why is over mashing bad? Stuff like that. I don't even want to, I, I never want to know that stuff. I never want to learn that stuff. Uh, but yeah, six months class tops, you're going to be shredding at brewing. Don't break the bank. That's what I say. Number four, build relationships. We're building relationships right now. What's up, Dawson's Creek? What's up, you brunch? Yeah, paper cut, UC Davis. Jonathan Elliott, food handler's card. I don't know too many brewers that have food handler's cards, but I might be wrong. Went to a Philly beer school for a few hundred bucks, hands on and learned so much about errors to avoid. That's a great story, Tom Mellon. Tom, cheers to that. That is a great story, you brunch. Mo, 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 mo. Melted my arm with wart one time. You'll live to tell about it. Build relationships. Join a homebrew club. That's a great way to stay brewing and passionate about beer. If you're in San Diego, check out the Barley Engineers. They used to, when I was at Booze Brothers years ago, they would come into our special events place on Wednesdays and they went hard. They went hard. No one's getting drunk. There's probably like 100 guys in there. They're talking about everything. How to bottle your homebrew for competitions up on um not the jumbotron but like their their screen their their slide screen stuff like that and i was like damn man you guys have like a class you you guys are dedicating an hour of your life i don't know if they talked about it for the whole four hour meeting but it was like how to bottle your own homebrewing and to send it into homebrewing competitions i was like whoa you guys are gnarly number five volunteer volunteer there's a lot of awesome beer gardens uh, not last year from COVID, but there's a lot of awesome beer gardens where breweries, breweries are looking for people to pour for free. I've been asked, uh, breweries I've worked for have been asked, just ask your friends and stuff. It's an awesome time. Anybody in here, if you've ever poured at a beer garden, it is fun. It is super fun. As long as you don't get too wasted and, you know, you remember to put everything back in the van and get home safe without, you know, pulling a Johnny Damon. They're fun. You're going to meet a lot of people. Volunteer. You know, if you know, a brewery boss or friend that wants to let you work a day for free. I know that, you know, workers comp, some owners are very stringent about it. And some are just like, Hey, I just need help, man. Like, just, can you help me out for this day? I'm going to teach you how to brew. Jump on that opportunity. Jump on that opportunity. Volunteer. Are we getting trolled? Is this Roswell's? Um, number six, and this is a tough one. I probably couldn't have done this back in my twenties. Have a great handle on alcohol. If you get drunk every single day and you're an asshole when you're drunk, it's not going to happen. I'm not naming names, but I know countless stories of interns, cellar guys, bartenders, beer tenders, brewers, owners that got DUIs leaving their jobs, leaving their work. They had so much to drink at their work. They fucking ruined a very good thing. I drink my ass off. I have a good time. I'm never in trouble. You just got to know how to put yourself in good alcohol situations. Like if I go off with my friends at 9 a.m. And we start drinking at 9 a.m. It's going to be a wild, expensive day. It's going to be a wild, expensive Uber day. It's going to be expensive just an Uber, let alone going out. Uber is expensive as hell these days. So, um, you know, if you get a job, you get an internship, don't hang out at your place all day and drink for free. I know a lot of breweries that turn a blind eye to their, uh, employees doing shit like that. And it always ends bad because you can't do that forever. You can't get drunk and drive 20 minutes every day, especially if you stick around till post 10 o'clock PM, because there's a pretty good chance, you know, if a cop pulls you over at 11 o'clock or midnight on a Tuesday night, uh, you're probably fucked up. So have a good handle on alcohol just because, you know, I've seen friends blow it. I've seen friends fucking really blow it. Um, not trying to bum anybody out, but this is the safest we're doing right now. We're drinking beer. We can get as drunk as we want right now. We are at home. This is a good alcohol situation. This is the best alcohol situation. No one's driving. We're not at a bar. No one's got to come home from the game. Get on a trolley. We're at home. Everybody here is... is Walk everywhere in my town. Jonathan Elliott has got it figured out. I I know some friends that have got uh, DUIs on a bicycle. But hey, they were trying to do the right thing. They were trying to do the right thing. A for effort. Delonious Monk is on a bridge right now going in reverse. Number seven, have a good work ethic. Brewing is very blue collar. You, can, uh, you can't hack blue collar. 
can't hack construction, you know. Blue collar is blue collar. You're not a salesman. You're not a day trader. There's no get rich commission scheme. And you're going to know. You're going to know. People are going to know. You know, are you, are you bitching and complaining all day? Are you whining? Is, is everything too hard and too strong? Not as gnarly as construction. For the most part, brewing your, your inside for one, that's huge. You know, I've worked days construction, man. I talked to Roswell's out there in um, North Dakota, but like in the rain, outside, on a hillside, putting up a beam or something. It's a really good way to get hurt really fast. Lose a finger, slap your head on the ground, hit, slap your head on the slab. Um, what the fuck am I talking about right now? I don't know. Blue collar. You're going to know if you have good work ethic or not. You're going to know if you have good work ethic or not. Generally, that starts from a younger age, too. So, And number eight. Number eight. And this might be subjective. Or this just might be in general for pretty much anybody. But um, I think the younger you are, the better. I think, um, you know, when you see 19-year-old kids in the brewing industry, like Enzo, who can't even legally drink yet, I'm like, whoa. This guy has a hell of a head start, you know. If he's got the drive, he's not a fuck up. He doesn't drive wasted. He's not paying off DUIs and shit like that. And he knows how to stay out of trouble. Uh, you have a huge head start. You know, I'm, if you're a 45 year old guy trying to get in the beer industry, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. And you can say that pretty much about any industry, any industry. But um, Mike at Culver has some guys that work for him that aren't 21. It's crazy. I think their moms have to like pick them up in some. You just made beer and your mom's picking you up from work. That's crazy, man. Jonathan Elliott, for sure. I agree. CHA, I'm 40. Hey, I'm 36, man. I'm on, you know, I'm on the other side of 30 right now. Y you could probably say that about anything. You could say that if you're a 19-year-old kid that wants to be an accountant, you probably have a way head, a bigger head start than somebody that's 25 years old. And hey, if you want to get into brewing at 25, that's not bad at all. If you want to get into brewing at 35, you just want to be around beer, that's cool. But I think if you're younger, I think it's just uh, more likely to get hired. I think... Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you wouldn't want to hire somebody that is under 21 or 21. Cause you're just going to assume like when we were all 21, what did we do? Just got fucked up. We didn't drink beer. We wanted to get like as fucked up as humanly possible. I remember me and my friends, we used to have, we used to do German burritos just to, just to throw up German burritos, take a shot of Jägermeister and chase it with a shot of tequila, German burrito. I mean, I'll, you know, I'll do one right now if, uh, you know, someone's buying, but, um, uh